What's up, guys? Welcome back. I'm here with Flo and Apps, Biz Apps MVP, Kent Weir. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. It's actually a decent day today here in Seattle. It's not too rainy, so that's uh, always a plus. Totally. And here it's not that cold, which is always a plus. <laughs> all right. Mild all over. Thank you, climate change. <laughs> all right. So uh, today's video is a fun one. Uh, I've actually been trying to prepare a brand new keynote talk for this year. I have the Scottish Summit that I'm doing. And, uh, and, and so I wanted to make an all new talk for 2020 and not redo the same keynote as I did last year. Well, in doing that, I hit up some of the community, some of the hashtag flow fam. And I said, guys, I need pictures of you because there's a couple of slides in the deck where I want to put your faces. And, uh, and so everyone sent me pictures, which were awesome. But Kent, let me tell you, man, trying to like Photoshop out the backgrounds of photos Man, that is like a ton of time and a ton of work. Have you ever tried to do it? I have not even bothered because I assumed as much, so. Yeah, yeah, it was just, it's a skill set that I don't possess. And so, you know, being the techno solver, that's a new word, techno solver, I like that. Techno solver, yeah. Yeah, yeah, techno solver, I like that. Uh, being a techno solver, I went and did a little research and said, how the heck, can we do this with less effort? And I found there's an AI that has an API that we can connect to. And so I went and I bought access, which, oh my gosh, the access to that API was a little bit pricey, huh, Ken? Well, I guess, but that's why, right? Because it's a hard problem to solve. It is, that's true. No, that's very true. If you think about it in the grand scheme of like time saved, it's actually not that expensive. Okay, totally. so so this is called Remove BG. If you go remove.bg.com, you can go check out this API. It removes the background from photos. And so I hit up the Flow Fam and I say, guys, I am spending way too much time in Photoshop. Does somebody want to help me connect a flow to this API and scrape the background out of all these photos for me? And Kent was like, yeah, man, I could do that. So Kent, you're here with me again on the channel, which is always a pleasure. I'm now going to quiet my motor mouth and hand it over to you. <laughs> Why don't you uh, show us what you have for us? Uh, sure, can you see my screen okay? Yes, sure do. Perfect. Okay, so first off, let's just talk a little bit about this service. So this is the first time I've seen this service or even heard of this service was after you mentioned it. And as you mentioned, there is an API, which is great. So as soon as I found out there's an API, I'm kind of like, well, how hard can it be? Sure, I'll sign up and let's let's give this a go. I like challenges. And all in all, it's not too bad of an experience. So the idea is that you're going to have an API key, which is how they monetize uh, basically using their service. So you had hooked me up with that API key. And then I went over to their tools and API page. And then I scrolled down to look at some sample code. Now there's generally two options. You can pass in the raw data as an image file, or you can pass in an image URL. And I just went with the assumption that that's gonna be easier. And I just went with that mode. Then what I did is I went over here and clicked on .NET just because that's the language I'm most familiar with just to get a sense of what are the inputs that they're expecting. Now mm -hmm. it ended up being that I didn't actually have to look at this. I was more curious than anything else because they give you this great little testing harness down here, which is pretty cool. So if you've used oh. any of the um, open API spec or what used to be called Swagger and even the custom connector experience inside of Flow, Flow Power Automate and Power Apps, this won't look too foreign to you. Uh, so what I did is I went over here and I selected this dropdown of application JSON because I didn't want to deal with these multi-part forms and, and other approaches. I just give me the JSON and they give you this sample message. And so I'm like, okay, this looks pretty decent. I'm essentially gonna need to pass in this message body to the API, and it should then give me an image back with the background removed. And so the only hang up I did have was here, they start talking about string for a couple of these fields. And that's where you really need to look into the schema where it gives you more uh, descriptions or actually sample data that you can actually pass in as parameters. So that hung me up a little bit, but all in all, pretty straightforward. Okay. So if we head back over to your picture gallery, this is all of the pictures that the Flow Fam sent in. And you yep. can see 
these are shot in different sort of modes. Um, everybody has a different background. And the goal of all of this was to remove the background so it was essentially transparent. And so what I did is I built a flow that was going to call this remove.bg service that takes care of removing that background. Cool. And all in all, yeah. I'll say that the results are pretty good. I would say yeah. the better the picture like that you send in, the better the result outbound, but all in all, pretty good. And we'll show you that here shortly. Cool. So the, the solution isn't overly complex. I wanted to just manually trigger a flow, the, you know, my favorite trigger. And yeah. then what I did is I included the API key that you provided me and I included it just in a compose action here, just so we don't expose it through the video. And then what I wanted to do is to, yeah, got to save John some money. Um, <laughs> then what I did is I basically have this list files in a folder. So this is a OneDrive for business action. And what I want to do is I want to go through all of those pictures that are in that, that folder inside of OneDrive. And for each one of those files or images, I want to be able to call the service. Yep. Okay. Now, do you remember before I did talk about how we want to pass in a URL? To the service. I don't want to be messing with putting in message bodies. I just want to say, here's the URL where you can access the picture, and then you go do your magic and give me the results. So to do that, I wanted to create a share link, and I can do this automatically. I'd never done this before, so this is actually kind of neat, where right. I will get for every picture, I will go ahead and create a shareable link. Now, in this case, it's anonymous. Um, this isn't overly sensitive data, so I wasn't too hung up about this. You had sort of everyone's consent that they could you could publicly use their picture. So I wasn't overly concerned with using this approach. But naturally, if you were using corporate data, you can you can lock that down as appropriate. Right. Now, here's the, the root of it. Here's the, the, the core piece that we want to talk about today is their API. So they gave us the URL. And since we're passing in a message body, we need to provide a post method. And so here I've basically copied the sample message body, I then replace these parameters. Wherever it says string, you know that you need to provide something specific. I then pasted it into the body of this HTTP action, and then I included the web URL, which gets returned from our create share link action that we used previously. Nice. And then, of course, we have to provide our API key, so I'm using the compose action that I previously established. And then in the sample documentation, it talks about headers that you need to provide into the service in order for it to accept your request properly. Okay, so then that completes the HTTP action. And the next step is we're gonna go ahead and then create the file inside of OneDrive. And I'm gonna put it into a different folder. So in this case, I have a folder called output. I'm gonna okay. use the original file name. And so this is the file name that would have come from the, the file itself when we've listed it in the folder. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and pass in the content. Now, what's behind this expression is, although it's not being displayed here, is that I am converting the content from Base64 to binary, just because OneDrive for Business is expecting to receive that data in binary format. So that's just something to be aware of when you go ahead and use any sort of service where they're actually giving you the data in Base64 and you need to get it into OneDrive for Business. So for me, the data was still being created originally, but I couldn't actually open the file. Like it was just basically would I'd get an error whenever I tried to open it, but there was definitely content there. Okay, so that's, so that's a convert expression. It is. So inside of the expression, there will be an expression, sorry, the expression editor, there will be base 64 to binary, and then yeah, inside okay. of there, I was passing in body, body, and then the HTTP action, and then cool. basically the name of this uh, content here. Okay, awesome. Okay, so you ready to see this run? I'm ready, man. Let's check it out. Okay, so we're, we're not going to reprocess all of the images, but we will do is process this sample. That's so good. Don't do them all because those API calls are like <laughs> 90 cents a piece. <laughs> so here's a picture of, of me, and obviously there's this background from a conference that I spoke at at one point in time. Yep. And so let's just go ahead and let's run this flow. I'm just going to use test, and then I'll perform the trigger action. And then we'll go ahead and 
kick this off. And it runs pretty quickly, like for considering I'm making some calls into OneDrive for Business and then the service itself. Um, it is yeah. pretty quick. So at that wow, point, that really fast. Things should be good. Uh, let's go ahead and check out our output folder. Here we go, output. And if we scroll down, we see just a few seconds ago, there was this Kent image. Nice. And so I can go ahead and click on it. And we see that the background has been removed. Awesome. You know what I love about this picture too is uh, it looks like you were like holding a water bottle or something at one point there, and I could Photoshop in so many things into your hand. <laughs> yeah, no, that is true. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> oh, man, that is awesome. That saved me a ton of time. So now let's go to the output folder and, and kind of take a look at them here. So, I mean, this is awesome. Like you said, I think the, the input image definitely makes a difference uh, for sure. I'm just going to bring up the other, the original folder, just so ah, okay. I'm going to do some compare and contrast here. Yeah, so. yeah. So do me a favor, click on Daniel Christian's original and, and open it up and then click on his output one and, and let's do that too. Look at that. Wow, that came out really good. Man, that's like, so, so to be honest, that's better than I could have done in Photoshop. Like those edges are so crisp and clean. Uh, I mean, like look at his, his right shoulder, how the chair is just completely taken out, how the, the bed is completely taken out. Like that edge is really the edge of his coat. Man, that AI is super smart. It's super clean, yeah. Like that's you can usually tell, you know, when you know some of these other services that it's just kind of a hacky job. But yeah. I was I was pretty impressed with what I saw. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so now all I need to do is when I need to, I'll load up that photo that 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 folder with a bunch of pictures again, and then we can just click the button and it'll output a whole other batch whenever I'm ready. Absolutely, yeah. It's pretty Thanks. simple. Sweet Kent, man. Thank you for saving me about a hundred hours in Photoshop and also like for making the flow film look way better. Cause I would have like cut off ears, <laughs> or, you know, the, the first three photos would have looked great, but by the end of 33 or 34, I'd have got lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just like, it just, what is the, the token flow saying or token uh, work less, do more, right? It sort of aligns very much in with uh, with that whole mantra. So no, no, Ken. Now it's be more productive automatically. Well, hey, that works too. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining me and Kent. Kent, thank you as always for coming and dropping some knowledge, man. Really appreciate you taking some time with us. Cool. Thanks for having me. All and right. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel. I have to. I have to plug it. Yes. Yo, and down below, there's going to be links. Also, on the sidebar of the channel, there's a link to Ken's channel. Uh, so definitely go and subscribe to him. I think, have you broken your first hundred yet? Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. But, okay. Uh, I could use your help, so let's do it. Okay. All right. So come on, guys. I think it's very easy for you to go and click subscribe. And you've seen Kent on the channel dropping knowledge all the time. Let's get him to his first 500. Never mind, 100. I'm going to challenge you all. Let's get him to his first 500, okay? All right. That's it from us. Much love. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.